There we go. Right, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UK GL Season 2. This is the uh, loser brackets, or lower brackets, uh, final. The winner of losers. this... Losers. Losers. The winner of this will go on to take on Easy Peasy in the grand final. Best of five, which will be coming up uh, about uh, an hour and a half time. Um, the loser, unfortunately, will not... But they will, of course, gain themselves third position overall, so they've got that to look forward to. Commiseration prize, if there ever was one. Yeah. But not to be sniffed at. All these teams have battled really hard to get where they are at the moment, and we're looking forward to having a really good competition. This is, of course, a best of one, so... <sighs> it's a tough one. A tough one to know what to do. Do you go with the strats you've gone through before, or do you play that, you know, pocket strat you've been holding on to for times like this? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how that works actually. If the people who lost to Easy Peasy shouldn't they come in third? Both of these teams have lost to Easy Peasy. Okay, but I mean the in the, the semi-finals match. Something must have qualified Easy Peasy. Easy Peasy are in the final. They beat GG. So why is GG? Oh, here's GG. Lower bracket. GG oh, down into the lower bracket now to face uh, World Changes Slayer, who were knocked out previously by Easy Peasy and have had to battle their way past a couple of teams, I think, to get to this stage in the lower bracket. Alright, nice. See, we've got that going on. But has a, let's have a little ganders quickly at the uh, stats. Okay, let's look up the first support. We've got on Geek Gaming, we've got Watson in support. And from World Changes Slayer, we have Scum Gummy, their captain. As you can see, it's a little bit one sided on the side of Scum Gummy, but ultimately not that far apart, especially in your GPM, your XPM. Scum Gummy is, in fact, according to your graphs, playing both support roles. Oh, is he? Did I say? <laughs> I don't know how that happened. It should be interesting when I get to the next section. Yeah. This is what happens when you're having okay. to. Uh, um. Sorry, I just got a message saying, do you need a co-caster? Not right now, actually. It's already got one. Back off, bitch. <laughs> very possessive co-caster. They'll be very angry if you try to ounce him out. Um, if, it, if it was like in a real-life situation and, you know, not over Skype, possibly could drag in a couple of other people because, you know, that's always fun. You better not be stepping in my territory, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't believe you just did the clicks. <laughs> 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 but yeah, we've got Watson. Watson's played a lot of Dazzle. He's a big fan of Dazzle. Um, a little bit of Venno, a little bit of AA. Scum Gummy is favouring the Nyx Assassin as a support, although they have drafted it once as an offlaner. He also plays Venomancer and Crystal Maiden. Tix are giving it to him, but, you know, Tix can't don't mean everything. They don't mean everything, bro. No. So we want to support too, where apparently Scum Gummy is still playing in support. That is incorrect. Um... I don't think he's that much of a support that he plays both of the support roles. That's hardcore, man. That would, dedication. That, yeah, that is like proper hardcore shit, man. Um, yeah, you can handle me, but you can probably handle the supports. <laughs> I believe... I'm trying to remember the name of the player who's not actually in the lobby, so I can't even cheat. Oh, this is hard. Um, um, oh, oh, I, I knew it. It's on the tip of my brain. Why is the brain not doing the brain thing? Sit all you thinking? Clip, yeah, that thing. Do you not? This is why I'm here. Oh, it's R R W. Is it oh, something R W X Z or some shit? Oh, hang on, hang on. R X W Z. That's it. Oh, it's only the alphabet. It's not that difficult so enough. So easy to remember. So easy to remember. So it oh, so distinct. R W X Z. And it just rolls off a tongue. It does. It really does. So him, yeah, he's playing support. He's he's not scum gummy. They're two different people. But unfortunately, I was um, desperately trying to get all these things ready in time and. Yeah, mistakes have been made. Uh, at least, yeah, so Scum Gummy not playing this position. It's going to be RWXZ. Um, he favours his Jakuro. Also likes Venomancer, so Venomancer pretty popular and will change this later. And Bane is also another hero he plays. Geek Gaming have King Wade Wilson, who is their jungler in fourth position. He's been known to play the Enchantress, though he hasn't played it in a few games now. Sand King as well, and Ancient Apparition, so, you know, they love the AA on their team. What do you reckon, Sittle? The ticks? They're saying King Wade Wilson is going to win? I think you're mispronouncing Scum Gummy. How do you think it's supposed to be said then? Well, it's Swedish, so I know it's supposed to be pronounced Scum Gummy. It's not Swedish, it's English. Yeah, but it's a Swedish word. You reckon it's Swedish? What does it mean in Swedish then? Do, do tell us. 
Well, pronounced literally, it's foam rubber or rubber foam, which is basically what we make. It's the name for what you make with little candies that are basically just fucking foam. Uh, you know, it's like those little Santa Claus things and um, also marshmallows to an extent. Like, what? Cool what gummy. Or like polystyrene type stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's something I did not know. Now you do know. Now we and know. you should pay respect to my culture by pronouncing the name correctly. I'm gonna call him Scum Gummy because I like the word scum. Imperialist bastard. I like scum. We like scum. But yeah, he's not even here, so we should stop talking about him. That's RWXZ in that position and not Scum Gummy, even though my thing says otherwise. Let's go to the off lane in which we see Grim, the captain of Geek Gaming, going up against We'll Change This Later's J Lou. Um, got target banned the last time when he played up against Easy Peasy. He probably doesn't want that to happen again. Um, <laughs> equally, equally target banned was Grim on the off lane, so they both were on the receiving end of Easy Peasy's let's ban the off laner hmm. scenario. Um, as far as things go, they're equal on deaths, so they both die just as much as one another. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> pretty impressive. Does that mean we award victory to both? They both get a tick for that one. Um, <laughs> assists go towards Grim. Well, that does kind of benefit the hero like Elder Titan. Um, and kills are uh, edging towards Jailu. Well, I say edging. He actually doubles the average kills as Grim does. So quite a far ahead in there. And XP and GPM being higher, but that tends to happen when you have more kills, so... Jailu winning this matchup. He's a pretty mean Timbersaw. Um, you can expect to see that being either a first ban or first pick, so... Look forward to the crazy guy in his robot machine. <laughs> Shifting over to the mid, we have EZ for Geek Gaming. He's actually a stand-in, but he's played pretty much every game, so... He's pretty much a permanent member of the team, just not on the official registered roster. And Noob plays the mid position for Will Change This Later. Now it looks pretty bleak for Noob at the moment, <laughs> judging by these statistics. Uh, only winning out on kills and not by a lot. But Noob is a really versatile kind of mid player. He's played a hell of a lot of heroes. I think uh, he's played Batrider twice and then I think everyone else is a single, single game. Might have had two games. To be fair park. to him, neither kills nor average assists are very far apart at all. No. Just a few few decimals. Exactly. These two are pretty pretty close. Um, the higher GPM and XPM might be just sort of easy because he plays those kind of snowbally heroes, especially the Ember Spirit and the Templar Assassin. Mm. Who either they, they go big or they go home. Those kind of heroes. Uh, recently new played O D for the first time, so he's on the list. But we'll see what they end up picking here. Ticks are all going towards easy, but I think it's a very, very close matchup between those mids. It'll be really interesting to watch them go to head to head in this game. Mm -hmm. And Cariolicious we go. Nanax for Geek Gaming. He's not actually playing, he's going to be replaced uh, as they have a stand in for this game. Uh, it'll be Jalobi playing on the carry role. He actually played their games against easy, uh, yeah, easy peasy, so. He's played a few. He's played like uh, well, two games with them so far. So this will be his third game, looking to help his team into the finals. Um, but I don't really know what kind of heroes he plays because there's so little information on him. So we're just gonna kind of just go. Yeah, this is what Nanax might have played. He's a big strength hero kind of guy, going for those uh, Wraith King. Only person I know, I think, in the tournament has played Wraith King. But hmm. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. He's That's just not. He's just not that popular. <laughs> Wraith King. Recoil, on the other hand, Captain Luna loves his Luna. But just generally loves the kind of heroes that you can farm up nice and quick on, or like that, that progress really well into the late game. He's also played an anti mage, which you saw him split pushing his way into victory, uh, and he also played a void recently, which he kind of like doubled the kills of anyone else on his team, uh, as void tends to do. Should he get in that kind of position, um, the stats say he edges out Nanax, but it's not really that easy to tell because he won't even be up against that particular carry player. So. It remains to be seen. It remains to be seen what's going to happen, you know? Mm. It seems like the teams are ready, so we might be able to, uh, to get this going. We just have to wait and Excellent. see. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, they just actually lost a player, so maybe not. Oh, so they did. But yeah, the two teams square off being, like, pretty even, by all respects. Yeah, Grim's back in the lobby, so things might be going very shortly. 
it's hard to pick exactly who who's going to be able to get the upper hand in this game. And because it's a best of one, you really don't know. People they're probably going to play their picks that they're confident with. Um, that's what I'd do anyway. Once you're confident with, and you know that you can play well on, so mm. you might see two teams that are just playing what they're really comfortable with, rather than trying to either counter pick or you know try some some crazy strat. But crazy strats. They say they work. They can work. So, I mean, let's just imagine this. This is the stakes at the moment. You've got one best of one to prove yourselves and get yourself into that grand final best of five up against easy peasy. What are you going to do if you're drafting? I'll probably go with it safe and steady in this situation, honestly, and hope. Because in the end, the uh, game might be good because you might get a shot at the number one title. But in the end, it might be worth to just keep it kind of safe and hope for and do what you know and hope that that brings you there so that you can actually save a big uh, wild card for the final match where the gain is even greater than just a shot at the first place but actually getting it yeah pride pride is at stake that's what you're winning here the UK GL season 2 being able to say you are the best team out of all universities you're the best that, well, that automatically makes you the best university doesn't it so you know yeah <laughs> and I've heard that um, Dota rank tournaments are very great, a very great part of judging the merit of universities nowadays. It's all about esports. It's all about esports, man. Everything's about esports. I don't even. I'm not even sure where GG is from. I think. I think we'll change this later. It's from Kent, but I might be wrong. <laughs> but we're in the Good game. You brought that up. I know it's really important. Uh, this 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 looks look that. Yeah. I'll, blah, 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 blah. I'll put my teeth in and then we shall start. Yeah. Hurry up, Grandpa. Yeah, so this is the best of one lower bracket finals between We'll Change This Later and Geek Gaming in the UKGO. I'm Nuff, I'm joined by Sittle, and we're going to see if these two teams can progress into the final and which has to sit there in third place, licking their wounds. And out comes the bands, very quick bands actually from Geek Gaming, happily banning out OD, making sure that, that mid lane is going to be, you know, safe. Um, because nothing beats OD in mid. Um, yeah, and it's and not at all surprised seeing the other mid picks we had, uh, on average, being very mana heavy ones. Yeah. Um, they can be easily zoned out by OD. Timbersaw also the ban. Um, banning out J-Lu's Timbersaw, it tends to happen a lot at the moment because, well, he's a very, very good Timbersaw, so it makes sense. We'll change this later. Ban out Nature's Prophet. They hate Nature's Prophet. I'm pretty sure they've banned him in every single game they've played, and Invoker also gets the respect ban because Invoker players, man, they're just so difficult to deal with once they get going. I'm sure everybody hates Nature's Prophet and Invoker at this point. <laughs> they've had enough! Go away! Uh, Geek Gang have picked up Luna, denying it to recoil. Who would have played it quite happily if he had the chance, but... He's not a one-man uh, hero. Uh, it's not they're yeah, not one hero man even anymore. Um, mm. We've seen him play other things. <laughs> Just why why play anything else if you can get one of your favorite heroes though? It's the thing. Especially when she's such a strong pick at the moment. She does really well in the laning phase, mid game and late game. So <laughs> soon the nerf mm. hammer will befool her. We'll change this later looking to pick up their first couple of picks and of course they've been in this situation before last season um, they came third so they're gonna w want to be able to get in that grand final this time around they've gone for the shadow shaman I believe that we probably played as a support rather than a mid it doesn't seem to suit noobs heroes although he does play anything so maybe mid be taking a, a page out of easy peasy's book who have been running shadow shaman mid quite a lot could be you get a lot of disable with Shadow Shaman. He brings a lot to the table. He's got two really decent disables, plus his ultimate, the uh, Mass Serpent Wards, fantastic for taking down towers and heroes. And of course, being physical damage goes right through BKB as well, so it's useful all the way through the game. And, never, and Ether Shock is a fantastic nuke at level one, 140 damage. It's single target level one, but still. Shadow Shaman is just one of those heroes where you look at what he brings and you cannot look at a point in a single thing and go, eh, could be good. Luna a bit different, being that her, I believe it is her passive that gives night vision, which is kind of great, but it kind of looks like go night vision, eh? Hey, Shadow Shaman, nothing like that. Clockwork being picked up for J Lu. Be playing on the off lane most likely. I suppose he could be played in the mid position, but it's pretty unlikely at this point. 
Uh, well, mm. for Luna, you do stat her passive over her glaive, so you know she has a very like kind of standard build. You go Luna Blessing level one, then you try to max out your stun, ignore glaives until you know till the last point possible, mm. and then just go with that. Clockwork is one of those heroes that has a variable build as well. Uh, if you're doing really well, Battery Assault gets maxed first. If you're not doing so well, Rocket um, Rocket Flare tends to get maxed out instead. Uh, the only thing you can knock about Shadow Shaman, due to the he all his abilities being really good, is that he needs levels so bad. Oh yes. At least and his movement speed, and, and positioning. <laughs> for positioning. And position items as well. He's quite greedy for a support, but... Nyx Assassin coming out from Geek Gaming. Uh, interesting to see where they're going to run him. It's one of those heroes that we've mentioned many, multiple times before that can be played in pretty much any of the positions, apart from the farmer and carry role. Um, or the jungler. Or the, well, the jungle is still a support at the end of the day, so... Nick Sasson doesn't jungle too bad, as long as you give him a lot of time and lots of lots of mana potions. You can farm. Speaking of junglers, one being banned out right there. Yeah, it's unlikely you'll see a, a Lycan in, in this kind of situation being jungled anyway. Mm. You'll see him on lane and he'll wander into the jungle later and get a little bit more farm. Crystal Maiden being banned out, but he will change this later. Um, yeah, so I don't know what the next season is going to be. I love him on the offlane because I, I I prefer him getting that little bit extra gold um, and those early levels um, as an offlane tends to do as opposed to a support. So he can be a lot more useful. Um, he's not bad roaming support. He has a stun. He has a nuke. Although the nuke becomes more powerful later on in the game than it does early on. Mm. I just think he just benefits from the offlane because he's difficult to kill. High base mm -hmm. armor, high... Regen uh, and of course Spike Carapace being a real nuisance. Geek Gaming have banned out Anti Mage as well now, so that's, they've gone for two carry bands in the uh, those two mid bands. And we'll change this later, finishing their bands off with a Puck being banned out. And they've got Death Prophet. I think we have a mid laner right there. Yeah, quite possible mid laner can be off laned though struggles with the very very low base movement speed that she has. Mm. And her necessity on bottle crone in that situation as well can really be a nuisance if you need to bottle crone your mid laner as well. Indeed. But yeah, most likely a mid laner. Um, she's pretty dangerous. She's one of those heroes you can't ignore in a team fight because her ultimate does so much damage. Again, it goes through BKB. It's going to be pretty lethal for a hero like Luna who relies on that BKB kind of to keep her alive in team fights early on in the game before she's mm. built anything like a satanic. It might encourage her to have to like build a satanic over building a butterfly or something like that. So that's that's not decent that's not a bad pick. One problem for it is Nick's Assassin can easily proc uh his bike carapace against your ultimate. Uh it doesn't really save him but it does put that stun on you. Mm. But she's typically your heavy kind of mid game snowballer death prophet. Uh she's relatively easy to gank in mid because she doesn't really have an escape mechanism. Um, and she's pretty slow until she gets her, her phase boots up and until she gets those levels in witchcraft. So not necessarily difficult to shut down. It just depends what else they've bought, they're have they going to get in their team and what else you need to you know shut down. Is it worth dedicating your, your ganking to the death prophet when there might be something even more dangerous on the field? Geek Gaming have gone for the undying. What do you make of that one? I'm not sure. It's uh, possible that I would stick him on the easy lane with a Luna f as a support, or it could go on the off lane, because Undying is not at all a unlikely off laner. Not at least in my book. I've seen he's been off laned. I th actually, Grim, the off laner for GG, did play Undying as an off laner in their very first match. So, hmm. I think it was their first match anyway. It was the first match that got uploaded, so. Um, so it's quite possible that's going to be a Grim Undying, and we'll see how he does uh, up against what will most likely be a tri lane, depending on what um, we'll change this later. Pick <coughs> up. They could always Sorry. pick up a jungler now, knowing that Undying isn't really going to be a massive threat on the off lane. Indeed. He can't, well, he can still spam out his spells, I suppose, which can be a nuisance for anyone trying to farm. But you find a way to like just. <laughs> He's not very difficult to zone out if you have a strong lane, or if you have a very strong lane presence, something that has heavier RAS. Mm. He does have to be careful, despite his heal and the increased strength from his, um, from his nuke. Now he might be an undying that will start with uh, boots or something like that, just to make him more survivable, because early on he's pretty gankable. He can steal your strength, but it's not really going to save him if he's being stunned up. 
Earthshaker being the second support pick here for we'll change this later. Indeed. You're a big fan of the Earthshaker, aren't you? Oh, I'm a huge fan of Earthshaker. He's just received buff after buff after buff in in the patches. I mean, his his stun range now is just you can actually hit people from fog with it now. It's that far. <laughs> it's it's retarded. If you can get him farmed up on his levels and items, he's just so dangerous. That Blink Dagger Echo Slam can just destroy any push you have. Not to mention a pretty decent pickup, because if they're defending with an undying tombstone up, even more I was going to mention that as well. Yeah. It becomes an absolute nightmare. As long as he doesn't wander into range of it and gets hit by a zombie, then he's in trouble. Yeah. He wants to be able to blink in. Venomancer being Deep Gaming's um, second support, I imagine, because I think Nick's Assassin's and uh, Nick's Assassin is going to be run as that support Nyx. Uh, I mean, he'll, do, he'll do reasonably well against Death Prophet. I mean, Death Prophet uses her um, her Crypt Swarm quite often for last hitting uh, because you can like wipe your way back instantly and just. And of course, if you're a Nyx Assassin, you can just go spike Carapace when she does that. And, you can see it coming quite away because it's got quite a long animation. One of her weaknesses is that all of her spells have a cast animation of decent length, so they're dodgeable. Um, well, apart from her ultimate, you can't dodge that shit. You have to deal with mm. that. Batrider being the final ban for Will Change Slayer, actually. It's not too bad a ban. I mean, he could be used pretty effectively to jump on the Death Prophet. Another thing that you could be thinking is actually running the Death Prophet as a carry. It is quite... it's possible, but I would not have expect it. I imagine they were picking up the carry last, but who knows. Kind of surprised of it, about the uh, Storm Spirits ban from GG. Yeah, I get th th they might be thinking along the lines that Death Prophet is going to be the farming carry, but Weaver's being picked up here for recoil. Uh, he had a nightmarish tie as Weaver the last time he played him against Easy Peasy. Uh, the Shadow Shaman just, just destroyed him. Just kept. Evidently that has not deterred him. And he has Shadow Shaman on his side this time. Well he should be good. I mean the amount of presence you get early game from the clockwork and a death profit should leave enough space for him to farm up. Not to mention he could go a medallion build on him as well, which means that all that damage coming out from Death Prophet's ultimate is going to be um it's gonna do more damage, as well as Shadow Shaman's uh, wards as well, so a lot of physical damage coming out of here, so not entirely relying on those magical nukes, which is, means that Luna's BKB that we mentioned earlier is not going to be that effective um, in comparison to what it would usually. Mm. Of course, they do have a, a large amount of decent magical damage as well coming out from the Earthshaker and Clockwork, respectively. Oh, yes. So, yeah, it's a really balanced team. Uh, only thing I'd worry about is getting the levels on the Earthshaker and the Shadow Shaman. If they're in a tri lane, they're not going to get quite as many levels as you'd want. Um, neither of them are particularly grand at, you know, taking out jungle. Stacks. This Shadow Shaman's not too bad with Evershock if when he's maxed it out, but it's not the greatest. Might not see a Trident in this situation. I would not. Uh, can, I would not suggest it. But uh, who knows? It's so such a popular strat nowadays that you barely ever don't see it. But it might be we're going back to a two-one-two. Tinker. Ah. That's something we didn't see coming. So there's both, really. both teams now have the split push. Um, easy being playing the Tinker. It's not the usual kind of hyper aggressive. Carry uh, mid laners. I've seen him play before. That being said, you can actually run Tinker as a pretty nasty nuker. Go for that Dagon build, uh, and he'll just be happy to nuke you in oh, the face. Oh, we're not expected in this situation, seeing as the um, will change this later. No, sorry, GG already is somewhat lacking in disables, and probably be quite quite grateful for for a uh, scythe pickup on that uh, Tinker. Yeah, quite possible. I also think that it's quite possible that they picked up a Tinker exactly to match the split potential of uh, Will Changes later, considering that they have excellent push, excellent push defense, and a split push in Weaver. It's quite possible they wanted to match that, because they themselves, why they have perfectly alright defense with the Undying on the team, it's not, not as strong as an Earthshaker. Not to mention Shadow Shaman as well. Yeah. And it does seem like we're going to have a tried lane after all. Yeah, Undying's just scouting out what he's got to deal with. Had a little bit of lag there, everybody. I'm apologising for that now. Hopefully it'll, it'll go away and we can enjoy a lag three game. So, mm. no promises, because Wayne there has been a bit on the uh, wanky side Fritz. for the last couple of nights. Yeah. 
So RWXZ is on the Shadow Shaman, just warding up, checking the rune spot. That means Scum Gummy is playing the Earthshaker. Recoil is on the Weaver. Death Prophet is going to be played by Noob. And JLU is going to be playing that Clockwork. On the Radiant side, we've got GG. We have uh, Wade Wilson playing the Support Nix, with Jalobi playing that Luna. We have EZ playing Tinker in mid, Undying being played by Grim and Watson is going to be playing this Venomance and it looks like they actually are going to go for the 2-1-2. Two, two. Indeed. Well, and it looks like it might have, uh, that uh, world change they may have wasted an no, observed ward in, in the jungle there to stop the uh, creep pulling which is not like that. They're just be trying to kill this Tinker off in mid and they're going to get him surely just one more right click from somebody. Oh it's salving up pretty well but it's not going to save him in the end. And first blood goes to RWXZ, got that haste rune right from the start and decided they needed to make sure Tinker had the worst possible start and he's dead, lost a salve and he's just... did he even have a salve? I think it was a tango wasn't it? He only has a tango now. Yeah it's one tango and he's gonna... he's already behind. He didn't lose much time though, he TP'd straight back in so... actually seeing Scum Gummy go down towards the bottom lane so they might be running a 2-1-2 two, two as well now. Well Lou is in very big trouble down on the bottom lane so that may be why. Yeah. But it will probably be too late to save him, sadly. Lou's desperately trying to get out of there, but no, he is killed by Nick's assassin. There's plenty of action right from the get-go here, it's very nice. <laughs> so Skunk Gummy's just going to sit here. Uh, he will be pinged Presumably out, though, because there is a Radiant Ward that can see him. Mm, presumably he was fishing for the, uh, the uh, Alubi kill there, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. They'll have to wait till they lose about anyway. So he's still he's level two, so he's got a little bit to help him out. Oh, Scum he's wandering into a very unsafe out. position there. Yeah, now Scum Gummy's gonna have to get his way out of here. Out comes a sp uh, spike carapace from uh, Wade Wilson, expecting a stun from Scum Gummy, but he managed to animation cancel and just walk away in the end. Hmm. Let's have a look at the last hits while we're here. Nothing to shout about at the moment. But yeah, what do you think of this whole running two one two? I approve of it. I think it has really um, surprised uh, Will Change later to have a. Uh, it gives him also the strong lane support, uh, lane presence they needed on the top lane to offer some protection for the Undying and maybe cause some trouble for Weaver with the Venom Master being a very strong laner. And not meanwhile, the safe lane will. Yeah, maybe not. But see, meanwhile, the bottom lane, the safe lane, will be doing perfectly fine against just the Clockwork on their own. Mm -hmm. Of course, Weaver suffers pretty badly from having his strength removed early in the game. Mm. I mean, look at him now, he's got like 473 HP just from having a little bit of strength taken away. Yep. So, you just see how he farms up. They do have Scum Gummy here, but unfortunately there's a ward down as well. The warding from Those the... Those uh, pesky wards! Yeah, the warding from the the, uh, the Radiant side so far has caused Scum Gummy a lot of issues. He wandered down bottom but got scoured out. He's come back to the top and he's been scoured out. I think he knows they know he's there <laughs> now. <laughs> but of course, at least it's going to make a little bit of space for Recall to farm up that Weaver for the time being. Indeed. Because there's no pull through option for uh, the Radiant side at the moment because it was warded up by. I assume it was Scum Gummy that did it. It could have been uh, J Lou at the Clockwork. But he's got two Tangos left. And not a lot of HP. Indeed, he's having a very hard time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got two in rock in battery assault. I expected to be going for rocket flare at this stage, considering how it's difficult it's going to be for him to get the last hits without it. Yes, but it's not usually a good idea against a Nyx just uh, ragged an early spike carapace because you'll be hurting yourself nearly as bad. It is true. He probably wants to avoid such embarrassments <laughs> as killing himself. No one likes dying. Nope, especially not from your own spells. It's one of my favourite things about Nick's Assassin, people who bring big AoEs that take time to land. Oh, poor someone dying. Oh. Um, that's the most fun one can have. Oh, okay, Grim needs to re-log in, so yeah, I'll talk about... He was having some trouble in the lobby there for a while, so... Yeah, I wasn't that's having the greatest time as well with the beginning of the game, but it seems to have uh, kind of eased itself out now. I haven't had any lag issues for a little while. Hopefully it won't come back during any team fights because that would suck. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Grim busy reconnecting, but the, the Spike Carapace plus any AoE spell equals hilarity. Especially if it's got a, like a casting time. Um, I was playing against a gyrocopter last night as an assassin, which is hilarious. 
means I can even see it coming and go, oh shit. You can hear it, it's like, boo, and you just go, shing, and they go, oh, this is gonna go well. Actually, it would be equally funny with a rocket, though I don't see what Jack Hopton in the right mind would ever rocket a... Uh, it's assassin. It's assassin. No. He, has, he has a spike carapace, and he has an invis, so that's two ways of getting at it straight away. Mm. Boots coming out to Jaylu in the courier there, presumably to give him a bit more survivability than he has probably shown, um, shown he has. Mm -hmm. well, he could do with some more regen, to be honest. Indeed. Especially seeing as a health ring is nowhere near now that he's picked up that uh, boost boost of speed. Ooh, that's nice. De Death Prophet, now very close to level 6, also has just pocketed herself an invisibility ruin. Oh, Scum going in massive trouble on the top lane in the jungle while he's doing oh, this double. he's being oh, covered in zombies. In comes the rest of the team to support him up. They've actually got the shackles up on Watson. He will go down to recoil. Actually, uh, Shadow Rams getting the kill. Zombies, actually, though. Zombies doing Zombies damage. are doing so much work. Oh, WXZ goes down. Recoil can do nothing. Trying to kill off zombies isn't going to do enough. And he just kind of walks away from the Undying in the end. They're only turning the two by two for one trade there with Scum going barely making it out alive. I was surprised Recoil didn't continue to pursue the Undying. It made just scared of that, you know, Soul Rep coming mm. out. Quite possibly. So Grim doing quite well on the top lane. They got themselves a kill. This ward doing a lot of work actually. Scouting out Scum Gummy in the first place and now they're almost getting a kill on him. Alright then, we have an invisible Death Prophet. Is she going to make most of this? She just has no mana though because she had to pop the invisibility to uh, get mana. Indeed. I don't think she might be scouting out the uh, Tinker Vever. Oh, she's going to go for an easy little death wave. Yeah. Carry a wave even. Oh. Swarm. Bloody hell. I, I play too many MOBAs with different names for the exact same spell. Yeah. Oh, there seems to be rotation coming. Mm. There's no wards up, so Tinker doesn't know anything's coming. They have no smoke though, so they're going to have to. The Tinker's kind of just, just gone, screw this. I'm going to Bottle Crow right near my. Oh, he's going to stack the camps for himself. Jeff I'm Prophet. sure Curry is still following him, though. Oh, spot crying. Yeah. I thought he'd already done, so. Got Nyx waiting down here. Death Prophet's not going to rotate because this ward spotted her out. It's almost dead as well, that ward, but live long enough. We still have the supports waiting for a chance to go on Tinker. He, mm. they might, he might have saw them, actually, when he came to the edge, just giving him vision. He's, he's playing very to one side here to protect himself from any ganking attempts. It's a good play, actually, from Easy. It seems he has learned his lesson from the first minute there. That being said. Oh, oh he's in trouble, though. But they can't fight through the Tinker Bots. <sighs> no, he cannot, especially not with Shadow Shaman having such poor positioning early on. He just cannot get up there before he goes into the trees. They're going to try to come round behind. If they can get a stun from Scum Gummy behind and separating the, the enemies, or oh, it goes, oh, manages to get Grim caught on one side. Up comes the uh, the tombstone. They're gonna desperately kill him down. There's not a lot they can do here. Just hiding against the wall, hoping desperately he can still enough HP to get out. Recoil's gonna dive him, but no, backs out instead. RWXZ goes down. Watson's gonna go down to recoil. Another kill goes the way of them. This time Grim getting the kill. Oh, recoil! You need Zakushi so bad, but you haven't got the mana. Well, he's he's got a. Uh, Bloody hell, that was unfortunate. He had a Perseverance coming out to him in the courier, but his inventory was full of branches. Come you iron branch! Which m might well have given him a mana region to get a Tsukuchi off otherwise. Well, I've had a DC here from Noob as well. Well, that was a really ah. unfortunate turn of events. This tombstone doing so much work at the moment on this offlane for GG. Honestly, I don't feel that bad for Weaver all, all the same, because I don't like seeing people stack their inventory full of branches. Just it's wrong with me. <laughs> Gets extra stats, yo. Yeah, one extra. whoop de doo It's a pretty good thing to pick up early on, but I just don't approve of people filling the inventories with them like that. Because uh, this it. sort of situation occasionally comes about. Well, as soon as I send something out to me, I either destroy my iron branch or sell it. Depends if I'm playing support. I always pick up two if I'm playing support because I'll be going working towards that mechanism and that's part mm, of the... But why pick but three on a Weaver? I don't see him building that into anything other than a wand, possibly. Yeah, before you And even so... Jailu's on cooldown. Did he kill somebody? No, I didn't... No, he didn't. No, I don't I think so. I imagined it. He's going back to base with very little to offer at the moment. Mm. So yeah, it's not good for your Weaver to die. At least he had spent most of his gold on that Perseverance though. 
Yes, I suppose. It's, it looks like he lost quite a bit, though, considering he still has 247 gold in his inventory. Mm. He might have lost quite a bit. Still some servages for certain of the players, it seems. Poor little dead bug. So they tried to kill Grim, and Grills, Grim said no. Grim said, I steal your strength. I need to live forever. It's actually level 7. It's got his ultimate. Flesh Golem is one of my favourite ultimates. Not just because Flesh Golem looks awesome, but because of its nature. It's like, people were in, kind of want to ignore Undying, but... Especially can now. Yeah. But you can't ignore him. Because he's stealing his strength, making him bigger and tougher. Lot of the, at the same time, he's got that um, negative aura around him, reducing or increasing the amount of damage you can take. Um, it's, it's, that's why blade mail is so good on him, because you want to kill him quick, but you can't if he's got blade mail up. Mm. And looks like we have a lot of heroes uh, amalgamating into the middle here. I wonder if they're going to go for a push or looking to fish out a, a little um, a tinker kill there. They're smoked up. And they look like they, yeah, they're looking they for, look the for the tinker. tinker. And they might well get him, because he's doing the jungle camps. The robot's coming out there, doing a lot of damage to Shadow Shaman. Oh dear. That's now good. he's... Jadu actually cool. has an invis, so... Hooks in, and a stun as well, just to make sure. A lot of poison go up on Jadu, he's probably gonna, gonna die. Pay the price, though. They managed to get Shackle what? up on Watson, but no one to follow up. Well, there he goes. Murdered by the Nyx Assassin in the end. Out comes the ultimate from the Death Prophet. Spike Carapace, that's what I was talking about, but it's not going to be enough to save Wilson, I think. The ghosts follow him, oh. and down he goes. But in comes Grim. Very unfortunate that Sundying got killed and got stunned, though. He might well have saved him with a heal. That being said, Yolo um, noob trying to man oh, up here. Dear. Actually pinned against the wall by these goddamn... Oh, Somebody this is, ward combo. This is the worst thing that could possibly happen to you. Laser to the face, bringing down Noob. He's not happy about that. Not so happy at all. He's actually. He's <laughs> How? How did you block he was me? He actually in? blocked before the ward came out, but he just replaced the zombie he managed to kill. Uh, he was blocked by zombies, and the tombstone itself was blocking him against the wall. Mm. It's really unfortunate. He actually almost managed to kill off Grim with a Crypt Swarm before dying, so... But that was really unfortunate for him. No, Grim uh, survived... Oh, you said almost. 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 Sorry, yeah. He didn't die, indeed. It's a pretty active it game close. at the moment, though. Seven kills Oh, it's a very active game. I GG. think it's a lot of interesting... It's very interesting to see, and it's pretty even, too, I'd say. I think at the moment, GG are getting better with the trade, so they've only really lost Venomancer. Lost Tinker, what, twice now, actually. Mm. But he's he's well on to uh, well on his way towards those boots. So and they got Luna killed. Luna yet has gone uh, untouched though, and is farming up a good amount of gold. It's gone for drums and a uh, harvest already. Finished up a wand as well. Yeah. Imagine we'll see the next um, prop first proper big item coming up soon. Speed Luna. Although there's a gank coming her way. Mm. There was a ward. What's the distance on that? Mm, Would have just about seen the rotation, so that's why she's about at, her, uh, at her tower right now. Trying to stay safe and sound, although you can be dived by Jailu at any time, so... Indeed. Not like HP on him, so he's probably gonna... Oh, he's wandering forward now, and he's Actually trying to kill off Jailu. Not do that. Getting a little bit greedy there. In comes the Shadow Shaman. Does he have his ultimate? He doesn't yet. In comes Shadow, uh, the Scum Gummy as well. Oh, Eclipse comes out, but doesn't manage to kill anyone. Really needed kill there. Being snatched up by the Shadow Shaman, being played by RWXZ. Indeed. And Luna goes Very down. Very cleverly baited by Jaylu there in the precedent to that fight, drawing him out from behind his tower even when he suspected a gank. Death Prophet trying, it seemed to push, but it's so difficult to push into this damn tinker. Mm. Dean has got his uh, Nyx there to help him as well. So you can't wander, just wander up to the tower all by yourself, or she'll get hit immediately. Uh, cooldown of 80 seconds now on her ultimate. Tinker's gonna TP home. That's because he's got his boots, baby. He's gonna start doing that really annoying split pushing. Or well, more likely, as all the towers are still up, probably just gonna farm ancients or something like that. But he has a ward to protect him there too. At the top lane, we're in recoil. Uh, he's got branches in his stash. <laughs> Save them for a one later, I imagine. Indeed. Ping's coming out. From Watson. Oops. Someone at the door. It wasn't the server this time. <gasps> Pro Dota at its finest. Uh, 
Clearly, people just need someone to hang on the door saying, Dear, do not disturb. Pro Dota in session. <laughs> yeah, it's like hanging a sock on the door. Hand. You are yeah. interfering with national sports. How dare you? Would you really streak went. at the Olympics? No, but don't knock on my door. <laughs> well, Yolo. Uh, sorry, I'm calling him Yolo. It's Noob. <laughs> he has a DD up and running at the moment, so he's going to do some damage to this tower if he can. Tinker's bot's actually not in range to deal with him, per se, but they could push the wave, or murder the wave anyway. I'm a big Death Prophet player. I'm gonna see. I'm curious to see where where she's gonna go in her build. I mean, I'm a huge fan of buying the Yule straight after the phase boots. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, stun missed by Wade. Mm, very unfortunate. The King is not perfect. J Lou's in mid as well now. Does have hook shot. And Death Prophet being played by New. Animals and women seem to be pushing down the bottom lane. Might run. Face some opposition soon. Possibly. It's got level 3 ward, so it's definitely gone uh, push heavy and defense heavy, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Very wise decision in this setup, I think, especially seeing as it was on the off lane, it wasn't much point ranking up Poison Sting because it was never going to rest, rest uh, lane control entirely. Yeah, Tinker just pinged out J Lu rotating top, so Grim has gone and hidden himself behind his tower for the time being. It looks like they're going to mount a defense on the top lane whilst ca uh, mounting a counter offensive on the bottom lane. Very wise decision, I think. Yeah, it's so difficult to push into your damn Tinker with these fucking. Tinker robots. and Venomaster and Undying. Oh, wait, Venomaster's coming bot, of course. But Undying as well with the Tombstone is just almost a nightmare. Mm hmm. Death Prophet. Death Prophet taking opportunity to push down the middle tower, though. Yep, she's gonna use the ultimate as well just to make sure. <laughs> That's a uh, fortification, though. The question is, can they save TP it? coming in, she's gonna have to go. She's oh, gonna have, she's gonna have to, to pay for that. She gets the kill. But on, Grim doesn't have any way of stopping her. She's gonna man up, and actually. <laughs> oh dear, she makes it out. She's a very quick moving girl with those phase boots up and running. Indeed. She really did play, you know. She was risking herself quite heavily. Mm. It's staying in enough to get those last hit on the tower, but yeah, it was dealt with. First tie one down. 14 minutes in. Seems rather late, actually. Same thing. Both the teams have done a very good job of mounting defenses. They're both very hard to say by Taiwan even, so it's it's not uh, going to be an early finish to this match, I don't think. Yeah, if you look towards the late game though, Weaver versus Luna, who are you going to pick? In the imminent, imminent uh, timing, Luna barely escapes another gank on the bottom lane there. Nick's going invisible to scout out the enemy, it seems. Or to go for the kill on Clockwork, possibly. Especially with a nuke there to help out. Just spotted out the rest of them, though. But yep. In comes the kill. Oh! Gets oh, fixed up! Dear. And the ward's dropped! He's gonna get the kill, though! He will go down for his trouble. In comes the Eclipse. Looks like RWXZ might be in trouble, but does manage to shackle up Jalobi using those wards now. Micromanaging them, but it's not gonna be enough to kill her. Scum Gummy gets out. Tinker TP did. RWXZ cannot be happy after that. It clips in the middle of a creep wave and he still gets hit by two of the beams. <laughs> Very unfortunate. Such as life of a support. It's the sort of thing that happens to pub uh, players, really, and they go, "What the fuck? Why, <laughs> God?" They went about it for three minutes without stop. RW, yeah, you know, it's the RNG gods. They're cruel bastards. Mm. Actually, a rotation coming in from Death Prophet. Oh, it looks like it's uh, a dead Jalobi. Okay. Yeah, he's dead. Didn't even need. He noob. wanted that ward goal, but it cost her. Ultimate up in three seconds now for um Stealing. for noob. So can easily take this tower. There is going to be a defense though from Grim and that Tombstone. But uh, I imagine Tinker will be joining him soon as well. TP coming in from Timper, uh, Tinker. Out comes the ultimate from, and there's going to be a TP in as well ultimate from the Venomancer. Is down. down. Echo Slam comes in. A huge ultimate from Watson. Probably going to claim everybody in this fight. Does go down himself though. RWXZ is standing his ground, but it looks like they're going to lose Noob. No, he's on the littlest amount of HP you could possibly be on a survive and get out alive. Sadly, yeah, it was very unfortunate, Venomancer. Oh. All the Ticks just ticked out just before the damage brought from low enough. Yeah. Uh, King Wade Wilson gets a return kill on RWXZ using um, his Vendetta to finish him off. And look at Scum Gummy wandering back to base with 33 HP. Save the tower, however. Save another tie one. Dedicate a lot of ultimates to that as well. The Echo they really don't want to give the Weaver any space to farm. Yeah, they want to keep the towers up. He's farming and pushing at the same time. He's going to back out now, though. In comes the Tinker. Rockets don't connect. Because he went from invisible to visible. Very unusual. So probably usually the other way around. Yeah, bizarre. 
And he's using his pro skills to dodge. He's already got his ultimate orb up, and he's almost got enough money for that Lincoln Sphere, so he can start going towards a damage iron straight away after that. Mm -hmm. Stiff Prophet's been relatively effective, but also mostly shut down as far as I'm pushing the towers are gone. I mean, 16 minutes in, she's got one. She just going to find herself a DD, unless King Red Wilson can do something about it. He <laughs> didn't want the DD for a second. Wanted to make sure <laughs> he could scare off the Nyx Assassin first. Mechanism up on the Death Prophets. Yeah, she's got mech build. You see this? Yeah, she has. Very, very hard push going on here. No, oh, she's going to push as early as possible. I mean, just to see if there's going to get any blade mail to deal with uh, Tinker's bots. You don't see it really very often. There's a counter. Did he have Indeed. the? They've got. They've got Death Prophets ulti. They've got both ultimates. They could go to tier go. two here if there's not a big enough defense, but there seems to be a lot of people TPing in. They also have an Earthshaker with blink oh, up, but not his ultimate for another few seconds. Oh, Jalobi just trapped himself in there with his own creep there for a second. Gets stunned up, is gonna die. So is Watson. Oh god, dear me. The Shadow Shaman has gone down. In the meantime, looks like they're gonna take this tower easily though. They move around, it's free lobbing in. Oh, JLo gets them both in there. Spike Carapace does come out. <laughs> They're gonna bring him down anyway. JLo's still alive, and so is Grim, but gets stunned to death, and he's murdered. In comes the Tinker, almost killing off both of JLo and Noob in the end, but being able to bottle up is our Noob, and he's gonna continue to push. This has been a devastating fight for Grim. They lost two towers due to the Weaver split pushing. And there was, sim there was simply no way we could sa salvage anything without a fortification there. Yeah, GG. So really. losing four heroes. They tried to mount a defense, but it kind of got split. I think the major problem is Jalobi got stuck here, in this area here. But he got stuck by his own creep right next to the Death Prophet's ultimate. And Death Prophet's ultimate at point blank range does a phenomenal amount of damage. And she's going to find Inzis as well. Go out and return so swiftly and just repeat. Yeah, yeah, basically. It's horrible. It's like a mini, mini gun of ghosts in your face. It's pretty horrible. And the whole t she didn't even need it to pay the Tate Tower because it dedicated the wards as well from Shadow Shaman. Mm. And they're not as bad a cooldown as people seem to think they are. I mean, he's got 30 seconds left now on it, so. It's really short, to be honest. Yeah. It's almost the same, like, uh, Dr. Um, TP out to avoid recall. Very nearly the same cooldown as Death Prophet's Ultimate, and neither of them are all that long, not even two minutes. No. I think just right. Gives you a kind of window to be able to do something with. They've been dedicated. You want this is the thing with them though. You need to play aggressive against teams with these kind of um, ultimates because you don't want them using them against your towers. You want them to have to use them defensively so they cannot push off of it. Mm. But at the moment they're just going to wander towards this tier two. They've got Death Prophet's ultimate up. They do have the uh, the Serpent Wars up as well, so they can easily take this tower. And they're going to force a defense here from Watson and Grimm. Watson getting stunned up for his troubles, actually. TP also coming back from Tinker. March of the Machines is going to be a real nuisance to push into, but it's not actually that bad for the Serpent Wards or the Ultimate from um, the Death Prophet. She can stay out of range and, of him and use it. Mm. They decided not to push into this, or... There's two Lots of teleports coming down to defend the top tower, it's, but Luna still staying on the bot lane farming and pushing for that tire too. There's five of of we'll change this later here. And they're also being scouted out by Wade Wilson. He's gonna look for the line and see how many people he can stun in one go. Maybe. They have the upper hand and there's no job. Oh he missed the stun. They simply have the most decisive ultimates. Oh, Wilson is going to go down instantly. Jaylu managed to hook him up and then they're going to back out. Looks like Watson's going to take a lot of damage as well. He does have that army of wards though and there's a huge rocket comes out. The Death Prophet goes down. Scum Gummy's going to go down as well. He is dead as can be. Grim running in using that soul rip. And uh, they're trying to fight in this this Tinker bots and you just can't do it. March of the Machines is not something you can fight in. Indeed. Nyx has meanwhile brought back and is looking to pick some, uh, one of the stragglers off of his ultimate I think. Unless they all teleport out of course. Shadow Shaman cannot, he's wandering his way and might well run into the Nyx. Uh oh. Oh, here we go. Wade, he wants him. It's it, and a stun. Mana burns the wrong thing, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's another kill, another pick off. It's a kill, 16 16 at the moment. Towers, pretty similar. Slight tower advantage. You have to give to, uh, well, I say slight, they have two towers. 
at the moment. It's nice seeing DJ. Grim equal out a bit in a fight like that, where it was so heavily weighed against him, but still managed to pull off really well. We're now equal one in kills and managed to actually save a tower that time. It might actually be worth looking at the gold graph at this point. Uh, it's still in the favour of WCTL, but you can see the way it kind of spikes back up towards GG after that last fight. XP, pretty even at the moment, especially with all this 5 mana going on, so... We'll have to wait and see. Indeed. It might just be uh, better for them to just do a Roshan at this point. Perhaps, perhaps. I mean, they could never push into a Tinker, is the thing. He's too difficult oh. to push into. Jaylee's I mean, been scouted out. Very good, uh, yeah, they're <laughs> making very good use of her Dominator there. Having dominated creep and using it to scout out the peripherals of her jungle to keep her safe. It's gonna wander its way back to the base now. <laughs> Poor thing. Recall's just gonna take all now of the. Now the other towers coming under pressure. Yep. TP's gonna come in though. Tinker's already here, straight in. You can't, you can't push into this. Watch the machines just hurts like hell. Especially when you do it at an angle like this, so you can barely dodge it. Indeed. Death Prophet's here, and in this. Rocket has said no fun for a shaker either. No fun for anybody. Having a bit of a lag issue at the moment, I'm sorry everyone. Nothing has kicked off just yet, so don't you worry. No, we seem to be okay. Tinker's going to rotate to the top lane, trying to take that tower while the standoff is happening down the bottom lane. Because they've got all these goddamn plague wards. Which is, will we take the opportunity to push while he's gone? I don't know. I have a frozen screen Indeed. at the minute. I think it's now also ready to push out of the middle. Two split pushers coming down at the same time. And here it goes. Nothing happens. Sadly, the hook was failed from the clockwork. Very unfortunate. Mass Serpent was going down. No popping of the uh, Prophet Ultimate just yet. It's keeping a hold on it because the words are doing that it would uh, work already. Because fortification. Mm hmm. You there enough? I'm here, Good. but... I just making sure that you hadn't... Well, the major problem I have at the moment is everything's moving really slow. Finally, the, ah. the game seems to come back. We got to see um, kind of a, a picture book version of that events at the bottom. I apologise for everybody. Although I don't know how keen everybody's watching towers be pushed over. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, it was a very intense fight. He had no casualties. It was very close. Some very close calls, but in the end, Tower. <coughs> Excuse Bless me. You. And we go. Oh, went down and nothing. And here comes the Devil Dolphin she was holding off on. Yeah, you'd really want to take out Roshan. I'm surprised they haven't actually got a uh, medallion on somebody to make this mm. so much easier. And they don't have any idea this is going on right now. Kill and. There goes <laughs> your Aegis of the Immortal going to recoil on that Weaver. So Weaver has two lives. On three lives if he has buyback. Actually very close Indeed. to that Desolate Indeed. now as well. So it's looking a bit grim actually for Geek Gamers right now. Haha, <laughs> see what you did there. Well they have Grim as a player, but... <laughs> that was a double joke. Uh, anyway. BKB is almost ready on Luna as well. Very nearly, which means you'll actually get engaged in fights then. Well, actually, we'll have to wa watch out for Mass Serpent Wards and the Prophet Ultimates. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm worrying about whether or not she can survive long enough in a fight, even with a BKB up. And not to mention, she can be shot out of the fight by Clockwork anyway. Hmm. It's still difficult to push. It's going to be really, really hard to take high ground, but I think with the Weaver being able to farm up and, you know, being able to just like go up there, do some damage to your tower, and then just drag himself back um, out of harm's way easily it means they can kind of siege pretty well. I mean, let's think about it. Let's let's not. Why not just build some uh, Necronomicons while you're at it as well? I don't know okay. if I don't know. If, out. I don't know if uh, March of the Machines triggers the nuke on them against Tinker or not. I do believe it does, but I'm not entirely certain either. That would suck if you're that tinker, and you're kidding. Mm -hmm. If they get, yeah, if they get like three or four books up, um, and that is the case, I apologise for our lack of Dota knowledge, but it is kind of a little obscure thing to ask. Oh, hook comes in from Jaylu. Man, used to get up on easy. He's stuck in those cogs, and out comes the um, spikes as well. He's going to go down. They managed to kill him off. 
on the two ultimates being dropped here by Noob and those Cyberbots as well. They've managed to kill off the <laughs> Venomancer and, of course, G uh, Grim went down as well. Buy back from the Tinker. He's going to go for the recoil. Rampage coming Rampage. out from Jalopy in the meantime. A so very timely in, uh, effort from uh, Valuna there. I was so focused on, on the supports being murdered, I forgot that Jalobi had killed everybody. <laughs> Which means that they're tired too on the bottom lane, it's in a very precarious situation. And this is all because they went in on the Tim, uh, not Timber, sorry, on the Tinker and fought hmm. the tink like, under the Tinker. You can't fight in Tinker's March of the Machines. You just can't. It's very hard not to in such a situation, however. You just can't. <laughs> you can't do it. You, you, you just die. And now they're going to lose their tier 1 in mid. Hmm. Tier 2 was stayed on top, but a tier 1 is just a no go. It's no hope. With that, it seems Luna's already gone and finished up a Yasha. Simply from that to, ti to team fight and the um, following push. Well, when you kill five people, it tends to do <laughs> good for your farm, doesn't it? As well as last of the tower, indeed. Wade Wilson looking for something to kill. Finds a J. Lu with double damage. Decides that's probably not the best idea at the moment. He's actually gone four staff instead of blink dagger. Maybe because it was more difficult to farm up due to his deaths. Mm. Honestly, probably better to pick up on a on a support anyhow, yeah. as it can help your team quite a bit, especially against a clockwork who, where you might, might want to get someone out of the cogs. The he might even want to get himself out of the cogs, in which case a blink is no good at all. No, you tend to see a blink followed by a four staff on most nixes, but those are normally offlane nixes rather than the support nix. So. Mm. You can, it's more reliable to get a four staff because you know you can buy it in parts. Don't always lose the gold. Indeed, and it looks like Venomous might be going for four stuff as well. Judging from stuff of wizardry, though, it could be a use as well to uh, pick up the things out of it. Fine, Tinker but is here again to stop the push. I'm gonna wonder if he's gonna go the Agonims build on Tinker. Just so it can be even more difficult to push into. Perhaps. Those who don't know the change to the Agonims, or was it added Agonims actually rather than a change? You can fire I four rockets. They added it. You can fire four rockets now. It was added very recently. Here they go, they're going to go do some damage to this tower using the ultimate from Noob. Server ones get deployed way far back, they're not going to be able to do anything to the tower, but they're going to just kill off Wade Wilson, he's going to go down. Grim might have to be a little bit careful. Wilson. TP yeah. coming in from Tinker, two buybacks on the Nyx Assassin and the Venomods, in comes the Eclipse. BKB up on the Death Prophet though, down goes your lobby. He did not expect that and he really regretted that, I wanted another Rampage and it did not happen. Looks like they'll be able to just take down this tier 2 now. Indeed, not going quite so well for Griff or GG in that fight. No, the the BKB on the Death Prophet was just like, oh god, suddenly this is not working. Indeed, probably a wise pickup. Really, to say. Good. yeah, and it's pretty um, needed at this point. I think that the um, Master Machines is composite damage, so it still damages through BKB. I'm not so certain about that, but you could be right. Telegandas. Oh uh, no, magical damage. Excuse me, I'm full of shit. <laughs> Tinker. Tinker's got the pulling. Martian machines well. deals damage through medic immunity and hits mechanical units. Ah, so it is magical, but it does go through. So yeah, Indeed. I was kind of A semi right. Simple hold down of the old button solve the issue. <laughs> Shelly is farming up the jungle, trying to get agonims. Uh, he's halfway there. What about you, Scum Gummy? Got a blink dagger. That's good. Uh, Ogre club. So agonims possibly. I would have been more inclined to go for. Um, it has to be an agonim at this point with your point boost in inventory. Veil of Discord is what I would want to go myself, but agonims is still good. Hmm. I suppose there's not a lot of other magical damage to come out. I suppose you got a little bit from Sakushi, um, the Crypt Swarms, a bit of damage from uh, from your Clockwork as well. Indeed. But not like a, a massive amount, so I suppose maybe agonims will be a little bit better. This veil has like almost the stats you get from a veil is really good. Indeed, and it's a lot cheaper. The magic boost, the damage to it. If you can deploy it, most people know, don't notice when they get it on them anyway because the. It is worth keeping in mind though that the majority of the damage on uh, World Changes' latest team is not magical. Really, only the Usher can lay, lay down with truly heavy magic damage. Yeah, but it also adds up, doesn't it? I mean, the Crypt Swarms are being thrown out every four seconds in a fight anyway, so it's going to be pretty effective on that. 
Not to mention you've got F Aether Shark, which is pretty decent. Even so, I do see why he would uh, mm. put more of a uh, bet on the actual initiation than anything else. I see is him and Clockwork are pretty much the only initiation they have, and his is the strongest. Well, most teams don't even have one initiation. I mean, if you look at GG's team at the moment, the only initiation they have is Nyx Assassin, which can be easily negated if they decide to Sentry Ward when they're going to push. Hmm, true. They haven't decided to do it yet. Looks like Recoil is going to try to pick off easy. Oh, he blinked. He needs to get out of here. He's trying to rearm. He's going to die. Down he goes. Picked off by Recoil. Yeah, it's a very odd just, uh, place to blink to, really. Blinking towards the Weaver rather than away from him to get by extra time. Might have been a panic thing. I assume he was going to walk there um, and then do another March of the Machines. And then, unfortunately, he panic blinked there instead. Hmm. And just was just left with no way out. As soon as I Recoil picks up, yeah, Recoil has like four and a half grand at the moment. He's going to be easily able to pick up his next item very shortly. We'll see if he's going to go. Um, Rapier. Rapier. Like, I'm gonna Rapier. Be, it's going to either be an MKB or a butterfly. I think MKB. We'll find Probably. out in a second. What do you get? No, he's got heart. Okay, then. Fair enough. He's got. He says, "I've got enough damage. I just want to be able to survive through the march of the machines and do damage to the towers and heroes." This tier 2 is going to go down, and it's looking really bad for uh, GG at the moment. They need to mount some serious defense. almost defense. looks like GG. Uh, you're insufferable. <laughs> I mean to be. Jollibee getting silenced up, so no clips from you, my friend. Recoil is chipping away at that tower. I'm dying, it's going to stun quite a bit of health there. Three stacks. Of DK. Mm hmm. Not too bad. It looks like he's going to back out and try to kill off Tinker again. Tinker just going to blink away this time. Oh, blinks in the right direction this time. He needs to be able to TP out. That blinks again. Oh, another blink. And another TP. So he'll be safe. He's, oh, this is why I hate Tinker. He's <laughs> so annoying. Need a bloody silence against him. You really do. Yeah, but or just to initiate with a good bit of damage. He can't do that kind of blink away. Bullshit. You need to echo slam him. They're going to go for Roshan. <laughs> looks like it. And I don't think it's going to be contested. They hexed him up. I'm not dedicating the ultimates to it this time. They don't need to anymore. They've got to be wondering where they are though. Indeed. Meanwhile we have a uh, Necronomicon level 1 up on the uh, clockwork as you suggested. Yeah, they're just going to go mass Necro books at this stage. Well, actually, no, they're going to go um, double Aghanims and then Necro books I imagine. Hmm. The sudden that they do have enough late game with recoil that they don't need to rush the agon uh sorry the um Necronomicons to win the game early, because they're confident that Recoil's Weaver will be able to take out Jalobi's Luna. And not necessarily entirely wrong about that at all. I Luna has done for a well for herself, but she can't help but feel that she's a little bit behind the Weaver. She doesn't have messed up a good amount of gold, but is she going to buy something to turn things around, really? Yeah, she doesn't have this innate um survivability that you get with Weaver. Mm. No, not at all. Luna is a lot more fragile in that sense. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's a squishier hero. He's got a heart now, so he's not anymore. But he's a squishier hero, but he does have time lapse. So unless you can, like, permanently silence him, he will just get a second life, essentially. Indeed. He has an Aegis as well, so he has all of the lives. They're going to try to mount a push here. There you go. There's the Sentry Ward to make sure Nyx Assassin isn't scouting them out prior to their push. It's interesting to see if they're going to like deliberately just push, or if they're going to look for like a a Jlu dive into the tier threes. He shoots and he scouts. But in comes easy again, firing up rockets. It's constantly harassing the heroes with rockets. Not doing much damage to Weaver and the Prophet anymore. Though. Well, Prophet a bit, but Weaver's got so much health at this point. No, uh, Prophet has a decent amount of HP. You see uh, quite often Death Prophet's building hearts later into the game as well. She's going to go for Shiva's Garb and look at things before that. Uh, probably a wise decision in all honesty. I mean, it's a good attack, t uh, attack slow on the Luna if she hasn't got a it big It could be up. a Vice on the other hand. That's Possibly. another option. Take out the Luna through her BKB. Uh, you, can't, you can't use a Vice on BKB targets, can you? Oh, sorry. I think you're correct there, but it's all the same. No, but it means you can get her before her BKB's off, and then you can kill her. Exactly. Or after. <laughs> or after BKB. Primarily before she's been able to nuke your entire team. Preferably. It looks like they're just going to split push now. 
They've got another um, sentry ward down. So you can keep an eye on this next assassin. He hasn't actually left the base, he's a little bit scared. And Weaver's just gonna... Which I understand. Yeah, you can defend one place, but can you defend two? That's the question they're gonna ask now. They're gonna rotate down. They're no massing on the one side though. Going for the... Here comes a four. To, oh, and a failed hook, sadly, from Clockwork there. No, but the ultimate from Death Prophet is wailing its way around. She's very low, actually. She needs to be pretty careful. March Machine's doing so a hell of a lot of much going on on the screen. Recoil March at the moment. Machines. He cares not. He's going to keep hitting that tower. Down goes the tower. Out comes the zombies as well. They're just going to back out here. BKB up from Noob. He's going to back out of this. The ghosts are still doing a lot of work at the moment. Looks like they're going to lose Shadow Shaman on the back, though. In comes Recoil. Looking for a kill. Oh, he might get Jalobi here. Jalobi's desperately trying to get out of here. The slow comes out on Recoil, but he can just Kushi away. Blade Mail up on Jailu. Does get stunned, but he's going to return the damage. He needs to get out of here. Mana burn on him as well. And he's been picked up. <laughs> that, that last cog managing to hit Grim and forcing him away from Rico. Rico, oh, he wants to kill him, but he's got Blade Mail up as well. He's going to do a runner now. The wards outside the base not being very useful there. TP is coming in from the Venomance. So he's going to throw his ultimate and then back out with a fourth staff. They didn't even manage to silence him up. There's a lot of harass coming out now from the Lunar as well. Rico's just going, screw this, I have ages, I don't care. I'm going to take down these racks. He's been picked up. He has been turned into a melted little bagger. He's going to come right back. He's under a sentry ward, though. He needs to be very quick. Gets picked up. Does have the movement speed still, though, so you might be able to get out of this. And he's running away. He'll be just fine. That does seem like a bit of bullshit, but you get to keep the movement speed even through chicken. It happens with multiple heroes, doesn't it? Mm. It's because... Kind of. But it does kind of uh, move to the point of a scythe to some degree. Well, uh, no, it's only in certain abilities that happen. I mean, if you're like Death Prophet and yes, you have your bonus movement speed from Witchcraft, it doesn't apply. And he needs to be careful not to be ganked here. Oh god, they're throwing the ultimates. Looks like they're going to lose Scum Gummy instantly. Rico is not going to hang around. He's just going to... Oh, well, apparently he is going to hang around and try to find the mid lane. He's been turned <laughs> into a pig again. And off to he runs. Fair, the Flesh Golem is a very expendable ultimate, having only 7 to 5 seconds cooldown. It's worth it's worth throwing out to try to get the recoil kill, but they couldn't, they couldn't keep him. Blink away from Shadow Shaman. He's saying, "Nope, not gonna nuke me." There's a huge push now coming out from GG though. Mm, might take this tide too, but I don't see him going beyond that. Recall's waiting in the we wings for a chance. TP can't get in here. here. And he comes. That's minus armor. No, he needs to be careful. He has to run away again. But yeah, this Scythe doing a lot of work for his, um, for them at the moment. He's mm. on, I imagine it's on easy. And sooner or later, they will catch him before him after Sukuchi. At which yeah. point, he's boned. Well, you know, he needs that. They're all TPing out by the things. Jaylu looking to catch someone out, but not being able to. He's looking for someone. Has found Wilson. Hooks in though and hits up Watson. He's gonna go on him. Drops up in the corner as well. He managed to force stuff himself out of the cogs, being pursued by Jaylu though. Oh, no, no, he's giving up. He's gonna back out. Just saw the uh the found the next assassin and killed him instead. Recall getting that kill. Gonna steal their stack. Luna wants that. You horrible bug, what are you doing? Well, he needs that for his demon edge. Oh, no, I mean his uh, daedalus. Demon edge has already been, been picked up on Weaver. Uh, he won't be daedalus. It'll be MKB. Oh, yeah, I suppose you have a point there. Well, at least that's what I imagine it will be. Yeah, I imagine you are right. Not really sure where I got the daedalus from. No, uh, because you're uh, obviously one who likes to build your um, demon edge before your crits, if you're daedalus. They can't really fight. I like to get to crits before my dear. Uh, just goes in with blade mail up. Oh gear. There's a huge amount of nuke coming out now. J Lobby in the middle of them. We keep up with a man up against Recall, but he can time lapse back out. They've managed to pick up Jalobi. He is dead. Scum gonna be comes in with TP. Uh, blink even. And well, it doesn't really matter because she's dead already. They still can't fight very well in all of this. That was easy. Using the laser on recoil, making sure he can't right click that tower. And he's just defending as hard as he possibly can, solo at this point. Look how much HP Noob has. Luckily his ghosts are going to return to him and he'll be just fine. Also going to find himself a very handy double damage rune. Indeed. But yeah, they're doing a fantastic job of, of defending the push, but they can't do anything if you don't kill this Tinker. Indeed, and it does seem like it's not going to go their way in the end. Luna is picking up a Talisman Invasion, which just going for Butterfly, but if Weaver is indeed going for his MKB, he's going to be half-wasted on her. She ain't going to be able to be right-clicked by Death Prophet. Mm. But Death Prophet's ultimate is what's doing the damage anyway. I really would expect her to go for Satanic rather than go straight for a Butterfly, because it really needs that extra health and lifesteal. It would be very beneficial, but the major problem is she keeps getting killed while she's pigged, so she wouldn't even be able to use that. This is true. I don't know, they just they need to... They just don't have the initiation that you are getting from 
the blink daggers on WCTL. Mm, indeed. It's just, and of course, it's not just that, it's clockwork as well. They have three ways of initiating if they need to. Indeed. Oh, it does look like Tinker's going to go for that Dagon now. Extra, extra nuke. Actually pretty effective against um, a Weaver usually, although this is a Weaver with almost uh, 2800 HP. I've just found Wade Wilson with this sentry. He's century. in trouble. Yeah, he's in trouble, but in comes well, easy. Here comes reinforcements. Scum Gummy might be in trouble. It's Weaver. Weaver wants a kill. Looking for easy. No, he's going to go for Watson. Almost nukes him instantly. He's been picked up. Off. He's going to have to run away from that now. Grim has his old, his uh, blade mail up. It looks like there's a big kill going ahead. Jalobi's going to go down as well, but they did kill Jalo off. Is it really worth it? Grim's going to go down as well. We kill on the hunt. Trying to kill off King Wade as well. Oh, he's down too. This is now looking very bleak, especially since Shadow Shaman has his wards up. I think look, I think it looks like we're going to take the middle barracks. Yeah. I, I do not think Tinker can hold him off on his own. Can Tinker defend this solo? That's no. A, probably not. MKB is already finished. Up comes the ultimate already. It's going to melt before it even connects. And of course, Monster Machines does no damage to the Serpent Ward, so they can freely put this up here. Rockets are coming out, but he just can't harass them down enough. Venomance is back in a few seconds' time, but I don't even know who'll be able to do anything. This is a second Racks down. Are they going to go for the GG? Yep, Recall's going to go to the top rack straight away. This Desolator doing a lot of damage. Do they have the ultimate from Death Prophet? No, it's still down. Oh, Dagon coming out from DZ, trying desperately to kill off this goddamn oh, Death Prophet, but they instead lose both of their heroes that had respawned. And yeah, this is GG for GG. I don't see them being able to mount a defense against Mega Creeps. Oh, ironic. Yep, GG coming out from Grim, finally tapping out. Looks like W. CTL are going to go into that fine up against Easy Peasy and see if they can get some revenge. Good game oh, though. Wish them best of luck. Very tense game in places, man. Indeed. I do think that in the end, more than. As, it was a very even match. I do think these are good, equally matched teams, but in the end, I think it was really the lowdown of World Champions later that won them out of match. I feel like it was a bit stronger than that of GG. Yeah, I think the Tinker pickup last was a really decent idea against the push. I just and I it did help them a lot to stop a lot of pushes, but in the end, it just couldn't do enough. I think the real problem was is they had a really good way of defending and split push into a, a sense. But Tinker tends to be pretty slow split pusher because of the way he works. He doesn't actually damage the tower himself. The creeps do it all, mm. which means that you don't take towers like instantly. Whereas um, with WCTL. You're happily dropping towers in seconds, especially with a Weaver. And I think the Weaver pick is probably the most key pick out of the strategy that they had running. It's because usually push strategies end at a certain period, about 25 to 30 minutes. But with Weaver, he starts coming online 30 minutes in the game. And then they've suddenly gone, oh yeah, we've defended our towers, but now we have a Weaver that we can't deal with. Mm. And I think that's probably what happened in that situation, is they had this farmed Weaver that was doing a phenomenal amount of damage. I mean, just with Geminate and another auto attack, he was killing off both of your supports. Um, and Tinker couldn't survive against him either. The only reason Tinker was still alive is because his ability to just blink all over the place and be a real nuisance. And the Tinker played well, and he does make team fights a nuisance for me because he does so much stuff in a team fight because of his re um, rearm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I think the Weave is probably the strongest thing in that team. And once they got to that stage, there was a couple of really good defences from GG um, and a couple of disastrous defences. The bottom tier 1 was pretty awful for them. But then their defence at the tier 2 at top was fantastic, so... I just didn't... It, they just couldn't quite match the Weaver with their with their one carry. And that's the thing, they, they had the possibility of having like multiple carries because Tinker can kind of semi-carry because of the amount of nuke he can produce. Mm -hmm. But it never cri he never quite got there. I mean, he's got he's got the Cypher Vice and he's got his Dagon, but he wasn't quite as deadly as you needed him to be. And he wasn't quite at the level the Weaver was. And of course, the Death Prophet was just difficult. Being the Death Prophet, Death overpowered piece of shit she is. <laughs> it's not overpowered. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> but there probably is a reason why I have a 78% win rate on her. It might be. It's not my skill, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> So yeah, that is the game, set and match. Actually, we're going to have another game in about 15 minutes, uh, which will be between Easy Peasy and the winners of this game. Uh, we'll change this we'll change later. later. Uh, 
I gotta do it. I'm gonna do a co-caster switch actually. Gonna throw you away. Gonna throw you away because Iggy's back. For a far inferior choice, let's be honest, but <laughs> hey, favoritism. Only because I promised him. Only because I promised. <laughs> but thank you very much for joining me, and uh, thank everybody else who has watched the stream for joining us. And we'll see you shortly. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.